Good morning, Chuck Holton here, and we're in Santiago, Panama today, on our way to the island of Coiba. And this is an amazing island off the coast of Panama. It's the largest island in Central America, and it's got an unbelievable history. And we're going out there to do some research, and we're gonna take a helicopter to get there. It's gonna be pretty sweet. Here comes the helicopter in for landing now. And so, welcome to the hot zone. This is the island of Coiba back in the 1980s. It was a penal colony. And during the invasion, this was the last mission that the Ranger Regiment uh, accomplished for the whole invasion. We came out here, uh, it was January 1990. And when we arrived in a bunch of helicopters out here on the airfield, uh, all the prisoners, about three or 4,000 of them, were just roaming around the island. And so we had to kind of gather them all up and put them down in a, a horse corral, if I remember right, down a little bit further this direction, kind of move them all down there. You could always tell the leaders of the different gangs because they would have a, a, a girlfriend uh, sort of with them, a guy, young guy wearing a dress, high heels, makeup, things like that. So we had to come through this area and we had to search the whole area. Now this was very well manicured at the time. This building behind me was not actually here. This was a basketball court and there's a church on the other side of the basketball court that's around behind this building now. But the main penitentiary was right here. And so when we showed up, this penitentiary had a second story on it made of wood and a whole bunch of cells on the inside. And we had to search every one of those cells to make sure that there weren't any weapons or other contraband here. And so we, we had to basically break into this penitentiary. Uh, all of the cells were locked. We had to break the doors down and that sort of thing. Uh, it was painted yellow on the outside and on the inside as well. Come on. Now, if there's one thing I remember about the penitentiary, it's the smell. It was probably the worst thing I had ever smelled in my life. The living conditions here were very, very poor, very unsanitary. Um, there was, I, I recall, tons of pornography plastered to the walls uh, from magazines and that sort of thing. And we had to come through here and search every one of these, these cells. Uh, we had to look for anything that shouldn't be here and make sure nobody was hiding in here that everybody had gotten out. Uh, you can see these rusted bars and doors. Yes. That's, uh, just that sound brings back memories. Hasn't changed a lot. So we came through here and opened up every one of these cells. Some of them just had a padlock holding the door closed. Uh, some of them were already open, but we had to go through both upstairs and downstairs. Uh, so remember there was a second floor here that's now completely gone. The wooden uh, second floor didn't, didn't survive very well apparently. So come on, I'll show you one other thing. Now through here was the bathhouse, and this is where the smell was the worst. Uh, there was just, it was like an open sewer in here. And uh, now the wall has collapsed, and you can see the ocean there, but at the time there was a wall there. I remember it being very drippy and, and just gross in here. Lots of memories. Come on.
Now most of the guards that were here for the penitentiary were already gone. They had already escaped the island. But there were about seven or eight left, I think, um, maybe a few more than that. And so we rounded those guards up and asked them to help us get everybody out of here. And there was still a man in this cell right here. Uh, they told us he was in solitary confinement because he had killed another prisoner. Uh, I recall that the door on this cell was a solid metal door, kind of like the one that you see back behind me there. Uh, it was solid metal, had a little hole at the bottom to feed him through. The window in this cell had been boarded up or something, so he couldn't see the sun. There was no light in this, this room at all, and no plumbing. There was no toilet or anything, no bed, no furniture, and just a concrete box that this guy lived in. They said he had been in there for seven months, and so he had gone crazy. He was, you know, looked all ragged. His hair was long and big beard, but he was nuts. He was, he was out of his mind. And he was living in about six or seven inches of his own filth in here. So we had to somehow convince him to stick his hands through the hole, just like this. Stick his hands through that hole and let us handcuff him and then take him out and bring him out here into the sunlight. And when that happened, he began to cry and scream and he just begged us to put him back in there because he hadn't seen the sun in seven months and it physically hurt him to, to be out here in the sunlight. And it was the first time in my, my young life at that point that I'd ever looked at another human being and thought the best thing I could do for this guy would be to just shoot him right now. Just put a bullet in his head and end it for him because he was the most miserable specimen of a human being I had ever seen in my life. Now there was one other cell over here around the corner. And it was right in here if I remember right. And they had about 10 or 12 people stuffed into this this room over here on the right inside this doorway. And the guards told us that it was all the men who had AIDS. And what Noriega used to do would be to take his political rivals and throw them in here with this guy, the, these guys, and have them rape them. And so there were actually a couple of dead bodies in this cell when we found it. And they, the guards, nobody would let the, the prisoners out of there because they were all afraid of AIDS. This is back in the the late 80s, early 90s, right? So back then, uh, AIDS was a real thing. It was a real, real issue that people were very afraid of. Now, I felt really bad for the guys that were in this thing. It was right around Christmas. They'd been stuck in there with a bunch of dead bodies, did not smell good at all. And so right across the way here, this building over here was the camp store. And the guy was that had been taking all the mail that had been sent to the prisoners and keeping it up here, all the packages and Christmas packages and stuff like that. So he, we, we went over there and liberated a bunch of fruit cakes and cigarettes and things like that and brought them over here and gave them to these, these prisoners that were still in this cell over here. And then we let the 7th Infantry Division worry about it after that. The Hot Zone is produced by Amy Holton and Live Fire Media. Copyright 2021.